Hello everyone, GM, GM. I'm Nick from the Solana Foundation DevRel team. And today I'm joined with Guy from Latitude.sh. He's the CEO and founder over there, as well as Tim from, uh, also from Solana Foundation. Tim is the uh, validator community lead. How are you gentlemen doing today? Doing well, how are you? Hey, good. Awesome. Thanks for so, having me. Absolutely, absolutely. I'm super happy for our conversation we're about to have. We're gonna talk all about the hardware side of running validators on the Solana network. So let's go ahead and just dive in. And I guess the first thing I want to clarify, and maybe Tim, you can take this one, is what's the difference between a validator on Solana and an RPC? Yeah, sure. So um, as far as the code paths go, there's not a ton of difference. Uh, a validator is confirming blocks. A RPC is also confirming blocks. Uh, the difference really is that a validator is voting and an RPC is not. Um, so as in Solana, you uh, have to pay some soul for each vote that you cast. Um, you can choose to turn your validator off in, in non-voting mode, um, and then it's essentially an RPC. Um, typically, you don't want to have a voting validator also be an RPC because the um, specs for that and the sort of the load that that RPC has to handle is a little too much to also be a high-performing voting validator. Um, so really, it's just a couple of command line arguments that you change, but... Um, makes the two have kind of different purposes, right? One is to handle API requests and another is to actually participate in consensus and vote on blocks. Okay, yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. And and since you mentioned the difference in the like hardware requirements that, uh, that a provider might want to actually give to their customers or a validator that's, uh, that's running a validator wants to actually use, Guy, since your company does provide infrastructure and bare metal servers, can you talk a little bit about like general hardware specifications that you generally recommend for running Solana validators and for uh, for RPCs? So like, uh, like Tim said, um, uh, you, you cannot mix uh, one another, right? You are either running a consensus, val consensus validator or an RPC that are serving API requests. And um, uh, so basically the, uh, you have the same type of CPU, you are looking for high frequency CPU and new, new generations. Um, most of the operators for both of the, uh, the RPC and uh, validators are uh, using AMD uh, third generation. Uh, CPUs. Um, there are a lot of try, uh, tries to use uh, old generations of AMD, like the second generation, which they could meet uh, the uh, the frequency that is right now about two point eighty five, but they uh, they start falling behind. So CPUs for both validators and RPC. Uh, new generation, third third generation of AMD is the recommended spec. Um, for for drives, for both validators and RPC uh, operators should use NVMe fast drives. PCIe four is is the recommended ones. And uh, memory that's the, that that's what changes the most. So for consensus validator. Um, the, 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 the minimum, uh, the borderline is 128. Uh, there are many operators still running that kind of spec, um, using Heisen, uh, CPUs, which, uh, can, uh, support the maximum of 128, uh, but, uh, the, uh, the recommended would be 256 gig for for uh for the validator and uh for the rpc as you have to to serve requests and you have to index the uh the three indexes that solana has today you have to have more memory in the machine if you want to serve the requests um faster so you you need at least 500 gigabits of uh of memory uh, if you are uh, providing these requests for specific program, as, uh, program IDs on Solana. But if you want to index everything that Solana has, 
you you should go over that. So one ter terabyte of RAM would be the the recommendation. So uh, yeah. So what I see is the RPC providers in general when they want to provide the whole thing, they they just use one terabyte machines, and when they want to um, provide uh, uh, to specific programs like only Magic Eden, you can uh, you can use five hundred gigabit machines. Okay, so in in that specifically to to clarify you when you mentioned the memory you specifically are talking about the ram of the machine not hard disk space because uh because hard disk space is not really super important for running a validator since everything is is more or less stored in the ram yes uh yes th that's correct the validators use um um ram disk to store the accounts so they uh th th there's there are two things there they are uh, the memory. The RAM memory is more performant. And mm -hmm. second, when uh, if you if you store accounts in in disk, you you burn your your disk in one year or less because it's <laughs> yeah it's, I bet. it's too heavy yeah. <laughs> but um, for for operators that have less than than two hundred gigabits of RAM, they usually use drives and uh and it's okay if it's an nvme fast drive it, they will not have much impact on performance uh, uh but they will cer certainly uh be burned in in a year or so on the rpc side you have to to have more space uh because you uh you are providing at least uh, two epochs on Solana, right? So you have to store more data there to to serve these uh, these requests. You mean hard disk space there, right? Yes, hard yeah. disk space. Yeah, yeah, great. Well, after going through all those specs, can you talk a little bit more about you know why bare metal on Solana versus a, a virtual machine, a cloud provider? Like, um, what? Why the? Why do uh, providers have to go with bare metal? I should say, or highly recommended. <laughs> Yeah, sure. So the the virtual machines that are used, uh, um, they are used in, in hyperscalers, right? Right, AWS, GCP, Azure, and these hyperscalers they use CPUs that has a lot of cores because they are doing virtualization on those machines, and when they do virtualization, they have they they. To optimize, they throw a lot of CPU cores so they can handle more workloads and more virtual machines for each hypervisor they are running mm -hmm. into, right? Uh, and when you have CPUs with, a, with like 128 cores, something crazy like that, uh, you have lower frequency. So I see a lot of uh, people trying to run there and they are falling behind the network because the frequency is not enough. They, it's just a CPU that has a lot of cores and it's not optimized for Solana, but for a general use case um, uh, on Web2 or even other chains. Uh, so, yeah. And there's another thing too. Intel's used to uh, run virtualization better than the than AMD and a lot of people that try to use Intel's even the newest generation they are having a really hard time to keep up with the, with the network i am not sure why no oh, interesting interesting yeah i'm not sure why if someone came to a conclusion on that but it just don't work and even for other blockchains, high performance blockchains, Intel is not just been a feat. So yeah, and, and, and the hyperscalers I are using Intel because they are uh, uh, they are better for virtualization than 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 AMD. Yeah, I will say there are a couple of groups working on um, experimenting more with Intel. I think the Solana community is kind of. Um, gone to AMDs and solidified there, but I don't know over time if 
people have gone back and tried the newest, latest chips. So just to give people other options, maybe experiment <laughs> there. <laughs> yeah, it'd be interesting to see that. I saw some conversation about testing on ARM as well, right? That that'd be, that that could be really interesting. ARM is really powerful um, and they have a high frequency CPUs. They can handle a lot of cores, even with high frequency CPUs. But I think it, uh, Solana needs to change a bit the coding to support mm -hmm. ARM, uh, but, but yeah, th that would be interesting to, to, to see if it worked someday. So the general consensus is, AM, right now at least, is AMD over Intel with uh, lower thread count, but a higher core clock frequency and uh, a large amount of RAM to be able to process all the transactions that a validator is actually processing then. Yeah, and th th there is this new AMD Gen 4 chip coming out, which will be really interesting to see the, the validators running this chips, these chipsets. Uh, AMD introduced a, a chip that has 16 cores and it can go up to 4.1 gigahertz. It's just massive uh, mm -hmm. amount of power. So that would be really interesting to see how, how the performance of these validators are compared to current AMD uh, gens. Okay, cool. Yeah, so let's go ahead and shift gears a little bit. We've been talking about the machine specs itself. Uh, I'm kind of more curious also about the um, about the the actual infrastructure side of being a provider. Like, what sort of bandwidth requirements do you recommend giving to um, validators and, and RPCs? When you set up a machine that is uh, a voting a voting validator or an RPC. They they will they will use fifteen terabytes of traffic egress traffic every month if uh, if they That's are doing a lot. nothing <laughs> yeah uh, just just to keep up with the network they they're gonna use fifty terabytes and uh, and the 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 bandwidth there will change based on stake for the, the, the consensus validator and base it on requests for the, uh, the RPC nodes. So um, for, for a validator that, that has 1 million SOL staked, we saw um, like the range would be 150 terabytes a month to 300 terabytes per month depending on the location where the validator is located. Interestingly, that uh, the, the traffic varies based on stake and location. So um, the average validator would use 80 terabytes uh, when they have between 100 and 200 uh, K stake. So that's, that's the average. And, and for the RPC, like I said, 50 terabytes would be the minimum to keep up with, with the network. And it can go up to 400 terabytes a month, depending on how much uh, the, these, these RPC is being requested on API calls. Can you talk a little bit about um, the pipe size, how much bandwidth you need to run a validator as well? Oh, yeah. Uh, so... The, the recommended would be 10 gig uh, in make interfaces. Um, when we are talking about 100, and 100 terabytes egress traffic every month, uh, you, this is about 300 megabits of sustained bandwidth the whole month, right? But it, uh, you, have, you, you can have peaks. So during a uh, huge mint, uh, on Solana or uh, uh, some some events that can cause peaks or even to handle attacks uh, on the blockchain, you have to uh, have these uh, all the validators with a lot of throughput to handle this kind of thing. So the the minimum there would be actually not the minimum, but the recommended would be the, uh, that all validators run with 10 gig 
make interfaces that are not restricted, right? Because you can have uh, 10 gig interfaces connected to the machine, but you can have the provider rate limiting these interface on the egress. Yeah, I guess I guess that makes a lot of sense. I never considered like the the bandwidth differences and the the actual uh, amount of data being ingressed and egressed out of a validator, depending on how much stake it has. So that's a that's a interesting data point. Um, are there any sort of like concerns about the physical locations and and the bandwidth provided based off the physical locations of the machines themselves? Yeah, I see that validators are usually usually want to set up their nodes. Uh, close to the majority of the stake. So they are always looking for East Coast, US, Europe, Western, uh, Western Europe, and, and in Japan. Those, those are the places that I, that I see most developers going. Uh, yeah, I, I think when you set up the node too far away from these taking pools, you can skip a lot of blocks and pack the the performance of your of your validator. So I see a lot of nodes in New York. Uh, the, actually, uh, when the when the validator is concerned about getting stake from staking pools, they want to be they they not they don't want to be in cities or data centers that are uh, much that has a lot of state concentrated they want to be in closed cities and uh, nearby data centers there to get the, the staking pools uh, to get stake from the staking pools but not be really far away from the rest of the network so the surround surrounding areas from ashburn like new york dallas Chicago, uh, in in Europe, there's a lot of stake in Frankfurt. So I see uh, nodes in in London and 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 regions there, and uh, in Japan, I think everyone just set up set up in in Tokyo. <laughs>